Hello everyone, today I will discuss about development of gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal tract or the primitive gut is developing from endodermal yolk sac and it is due to entrapment of the yolk sac due to folding and why the folding is occurring? Folding is occurring due to rapid development of the central nervous system. Here you can see the central nervous system or the brain is growing excessively than the other part of the embryo that's why it lead, uh, leads to folding and there are two types of folding head to tail folding and the lateral folding craniocordal and the lateral folding of the embryo this folding begins at the end of third week and it completes around fourth week and due to folding here in this diagram you can see because this bluish one is the embryonic disc and because of folding this yolk sac which is the brownish one has been incorporated within the embryo most of its part has been incorporated and some part of the yolk sac remains outside the yolk uh, outside the fetus or outside the embryonic disc this remaining yolk sac is called as tertiary yolk sac so this is the tertiary yolk sac and the part of the yolk sac which is connecting the entrapped part and the non uh, the part which is non trapped within the disc that part is called as vitello intestinal duct so what is vitello intestinal duct it is the part of the yolk sac which is connecting the entrapped yolk sac or the trapped yolk sac within the embryo and the remaining yolk sac outside the embryonic disc so this part is called as vitello intestinal duct or also called as omphalo mesenteric duct now this uh, gastrointestinal tract or the primitive gut is developing from this endodermal yolk sac and this uh, primitive gut this is the primitive gut this is the cranial end and this one is the caudal end of the primitive gut so at the cranial end this uh, macropharyngeal membrane is present so this is this primitive gut is ending cranially by uh, in a macropharyngeal membrane and caudally there is cloacal membrane here is the cloacal membrane so these are the cranial and caudal end of the primitive gut the cranial end of the foregut it is separating from the stomodium here is the buccopharyngeal membrane and this is the stomodium or the primitive mouth the future oral cavity is called as stomodium. This stomodium is uh, separated from the buccopharyngeal uh, from the foregut by this buccopharyngeal membrane. And caudal end of the caudal end, which is called as hindgut, it is separate from the proctodium, that is the caudal opening by this cloacal membrane. So cloacal membrane is separating the hindgut from proctodium and this buccopharyngeal membrane is separating the foregut from the istomodium. Now at later stage what happens these buccopharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane ruptures and then the foregut and hindgut will communicate with the exterior at, uh, at both ends and in the center you can see the uh, yolk sac is connected to the remaining yolk sac is connected with the primitive gut by vitello intestinal duct so in the center the yolk sac is co uh, connected with the vitello intestinal duct to the mid gut and this part the part of the yolk sac which is connecting by the vitello intestinal duct is called as mid gut and the cranial to it is the foregut and caudal to this connection is the hind gut so cranial part of the primitive gut is called as foregut then comes the middle gut and the caudal part is called as hind gut so the cranial to communication is the foregut caudal to this communication or the vitello intestinal duct is the hind gut and the part intervening between these two is called as mid gut here you can see in the second week the two cavities amniotic and the uh, yolk sac cavity then in the third week folding has been started and after folding the third head and tail fold has been fold 
and the when the folding has been completed this is the entrapped part of the yolk sac and the remaining part of the yolk sac which is called as tertiary yolk sac and the part connecting these two which is called as rectilo intestinal duct and the cranial part is called as the cranial part of the gut is called as buccopharyngeal membrane and caudal part is ending into the cloacal membrane and they are uh, so they will connect with the stomodium and proctodium when the these buccopharyngeal and cloacal membrane will rupture then they will communicate with the foregut and uh, hindgut then the gut will be connected with the exterior Now development of the GIT is by uh, all the three layers like procto uh, all the epithelium of the gastrointestinal tract. So the whole epithelium is developing from the endoderm okay and uh, only the proctodium and stomodium they are endo the, uh, they are ectodermal in origin and the glands of the GIT they are also endodermal. So all the epithelium of the GIT and the glands of the GIT both are endodermal in origin except the proctodium and stomodium which are ectodermal. Now connective tissue and stroma, mucosa, submucosa they all are developing from the splanchnopleuric mesoderm and so this is the uh, and the so all the three ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm all three will develop the GIT epithelium of the GIT and glands of the GIT they are endodermal the connective tissue is stroma, lamina propria, mucosa, submucosa, serosa they all are developing from the mesoderm is planktonopleuric mesoderm and the proctodium and stomodium they are ectodermal in origin. Now parts of the primitive gut as we have discussed there are three parts of the gut foregut, midgut and hindgut here you can see the foregut this is the yellowish one part has been shown by the foregut, greenish one is the midgut and then purplish one has been shown uh, it is hindgut. So uh, and the part connect uh, ju junction between foregut and midgut, here you can see the junction between foregut and midgut this is called as anterior intestinal portal, anterior intestinal portal and the junction between midgut and hindgut is called as posterior intestinal portal and they are represented by junction uh, of uh, or the so second part of the duodenum where the bile duct is opening here you can see anterior intestinal portal is represented in adult by second part of the duodenum where the bile duct is opening and posterior intestinal portal it is represented in adults by junction of two third and right two third and left one third of the transverse colon. So these are anterior intestinal portal. What is anterior intestinal portal? It is junction of foregut and midgut and it is represented by the part of the second part of the duodenum where the bile duct is opening. This is AIP or anterior intestinal portal and posterior inter intestinal portal is junction of midgut and hindgut or you can say in right junction of right two third and left one third of the transverse colon. Now what are the derivatives uh, arteries of the gut? This uh, gut is hang by the mesentery to the, uh, and this mes dorsal mesentery which is uh, connecting the gut with the posterior abdominal wall and from the this mesentery here will be the attachment of mesentery here and from this mesentery the Artery, multiple arteries are coming and they are supplying the gut. So from the dorsal aorta multiple arteries or the ventral branches to the gut are coming through the dorsal mesentery but later on only three branches of the dorsal aorta or ventral branches of the dorsal aorta are remaining and these are the art, uh, celiac trunk, superior mesentric artery and inferior mesentric artery. Celiac trunk is the artery of foregut superior mesenteric artery is artery of midgut and artery of hindgut is inferior mesenteric artery it arises at the level of l3 superior mesenteric artery at the level lower border of l1 as celiac trunk is at the level of 
T12, L1 level. So these are the arteries of the gut which are running through the dorsal mesentery or also called a dorsal mesentery uh, and they are supplying the gut. Now derivatives of the foregut. Derivative of the foregut are floor of mouth, then tongue, oral cavity, submandibular and sublingual salivary gland and parotid gland is ectodermal in origin. Then esophagus, stomach, they all uh, then uh, duodenum up to the second part of the duodenum up to opening of the bile duct. Then part of the liver and uh, pancreas, gallbladder, extrahepatic biliary apparatus, respiratory tract and thyroid. They all are developing from the foregut. So oral cavity up to the second part of the duodenum where the uh, bile duct is opening. This part is developing from the foregut and from the foregut a diverticul respiratory diverticulum arises and so whole the respiratory tract is developing from this foregut. And another diverticulum is arising that is called as hepatic bud that also arises from the foregut. And this hepatic bud will give rise to part of the liver and gallbladder and also the gallbladder and extra hepatic biliary apparatus. And there is also a bud arising dorsal and ventral pancreatic bud they are also arising from the foregut. So development of pancreas is also from the foregut. So part of the GIT from oral cavity up to the second part of duodenum where the bile duct is opening. Then submandibular and sublingual salivary glands and uh, hepatic bud which give rise to part of the liver and extra hepatic biliary apparatus and respiratory bud which is arising from the foregut and giving rise to the respiratory tract then pancreatic bud giving rise to pancreas and the thyroid they all are developing from the foregut now coming to the midgut derivatives the distal part of the duodenum or the after opening of the bile duct the rest of the part of the duodenum is developing from the midgut then ileum, jejunum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon and right tooth up to the uh, to transverse colon up to right two third of the transverse colon they all are developing from the midgut okay so the whole greenish part which has been shown that is developing from the midgut. So development of duodenum is from the foregut and midgut. Proximal part is developing from the foregut and distal part is developing from the midgut. Now midgut loop excessively enlarges and uh, the artery is from the axis and this artery is superior mesenteric artery. So part uh, this artery will divide the uh, midgut loop into two part pre arterial segment and the post arterial segment. Pre arterial segment and here the post arterial segment has been shown from the post arterial segment you can see the cecal bud is arising this cecal bud is arising from the anti mesenteric border this is mesenteric border and here is the anti mesenteric border so from the anti mesenteric border this uh, bud is cecal bud is arising uh, and this will give rise to cecum so cecum is arising from the post arterial segment So pre arterial segment will give rise to distal half of the duodenum, jejunum, ileum except the terminal part and from the terminal part of the ileum up to the right two third of the transverse colon it is developing from the uh, post arterial segment and the cecum is also obviously it is uh, arising from the post arterial segment. Now derivatives of the hindgut from left one third of the transverse colon up to the upper part of the anal canal is the deri uh, derivative of the hindgut. So left one third of the transverse colon, then uh, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and upper part of the anal canal is derivative, the derivative of the hindgut and all blad urinary bladder it is also developing from the hindgut. Now what is cloaca? 
from the gut in the from the caudal part of the gut this is hind gut the, which is called as hind caudal part of the uh, uh, gut is called as hind gut and from the hind gut a uh, diverticulum is arising towards the connecting stalk and this is called as allantois or the allantois diverticulum okay so allantois diverticulum is growing into the connecting stalk and the purpose of this allantois is to uh, because it give rise to development of the it give rise to umbilical vessels to supply the uh, blood supply for the supply of the blood, uh, blood uh, to supply the blood to the connecting stalk and this connecting uh, this allant the part of the gut which is caudal to the allantois so this part here this part which is caudal to the origin of allantois this is called as cloaca so this is hind gut and here is the origin of the allantois and caudal to this this part of the hind gut is called as cloaca now what happens from the in the cloaca uh, upper part a uh, septum is arising and it is growing downwards this septum is urorectal septum and it is dividing the cloaca into two part anterior part is called as primitive erogenital sinus and posterior part is called as primitive rectum anterior part is primitive erogenital sinus so cloaca has been divided into two parts by a growing urorectal septum anterior or ventral part is called as primitive urogenital sinus and posterior part is called as primitive rectum and this will give rise to rectum and anal canal and this primitive urogenital sinus will give rise to urinary bladder so urinary bladder is arising from the hind gut or from the primitive urogenital sinus so if we see the development of the duodenum it is from the foregut and midgut transverse colon is developing from the midgut and hind gut and anal canal is developing from the hind gut and terminal part is developing from the proctodium so it is both ecto and endodermal so these are the derivatives of the foregut midgut and hind gut and development of the primitive gut thank you